Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm here today to talk about Folio, the first Gmail assistant for real estate agents. To get started with Folio, open your Chrome browser and head to amatree.com. There, you'll see an option to install Folio to your browser. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and then on this confirmation window, I'm going to go ahead and click Add Extension. You'll know that the extension was installed correctly, because in the top right-hand corner of your browser, you'll see the Folio icon. After installing Folio, you'll be prompted to connect your Gmail account. That's necessary because Folio helps automatically organize your transactions, and to do so, it needs access to your Gmail. So I'm going to go ahead and collect my account, and I'm going to go ahead and authorize Folio. Now, what's happening is Folio is looking back through the last 30 days of emails I've received. It's looking for things it thinks are a transaction, and so that could be a listing agreement that was just signed, or a property that's gone into escrow. You'll then be taken into your Gmail account, where you'll notice this quick introduction to Folio. As I mentioned before, Folio automatically puts transaction emails in the right folder. Within those smart folders, you can easily find the related emails, contacts, files, and timeline dates in the one place. And then for each smart folder, you get a timeline website that you can share with your clients or anyone else you want to help keep track of the transaction. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Now, when I get into my inbox, you'll notice that Folio is searching for recent transactions. As I mentioned before, it's looking back over the last 30 days. When Folio finds a transaction, you'll notice it show up in two places. It'll show up in the left-hand column under the Folio label, and it'll also show up in the Folio button. All right, so let's get started creating your first transaction. So I'm going to go ahead and click into 895 Climb Drive. And once you're in a smart folder, you'll notice a few things. The first is that it contains all of the email received in the last 30 days that contained 895 Klein in either the subject, body, or attachment. You'll also notice this sidebar on the right. This contains access to the timeline, so it shows all of the important dates you've added to the transaction. It gives you quick access to all the contacts who are included in this smart folder as well as access to the files that were contained in any emails that are part of this smart folder. When you first click into a transaction, Folio prompts you to set it up with a few quick, easy steps. The first is that Folio needs to figure out which side of the transaction you represent. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click the buyer. After that, Folio needs to help figure out who is involved in this transaction. So that's the client, as well as anyone else you're working with. In this case, Adele is the buyer, but I also see that Katrina, who is my TC, is listed. So I'm going to go ahead and identify her. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue. Now you're prompted to set up the key dates for the transaction. Because this is a buyer side transaction, the two key dates are the offer accepted and closing date. So I'm going to go ahead and enter those in. The offer accepted in this case was the first of the month, and the closing date was the end of the month. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue. What's happened now is that those changes I've made are reflected in the Folio sidebar, in addition to being synced to my Google Calendar. Now let's go ahead and click through to the Timeline website. Every smart folder you create comes with a Timeline website. This is something that you can choose to share with anyone who needs to keep track of the transaction. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set up the Timeline website so that I can share it with my client. Now, when you get to the Timeline website, you'll notice a few things. The first is that it has an image of the property, and that's pulled down from Google Street View, but you can actually change it to whatever you'd like. Because I've set my key dates, at the top of the Timeline website, it notes the number of days until closing, and highlights the next upcoming date. In this case, there's only closing, as I haven't actually added the dates yet. Looking further down, you can see those two dates that we previously added to the Timeline, but you'll notice, also notice some suggestions showing up below. I'm going to go ahead and add the inspection date. And the inspection deadline was 10 days from offer accepted. It was happening at 3 p.m. The status was pending. And I'm just going to put a note that John will be performing this. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now you'll see that date showing up on my timeline website. I'm going to pause now while I fill out the rest of the dates. And a few minutes later, we have a really rich timeline website that's complete and ready to be sent out to my clients. As you'll note, I've added a number of dates with status to mention the things that have been completed 
for the things that are pending, and any other status that I would choose to add. I've also added notes from my clients um, for certain events that need a little explaining. So, in addition to my timeline, there's two other aspects to this timeline website. The first is service providers, where I'm able to provide links to my preferred inspectors, contractors, appraisers, and so on. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and add my inspector. Um, and go ahead and save that. Now, what that means is my client will have access to the inspector's information. Below the service providers, you'll see the resources. Resources are essentially tools that we make available for clients to use. In this case, there are a few default tools that Amateur provides. They include change of address, so the official USPS form, a cable and internet lookup service, helping your clients figure out which service providers they can use in their new neighborhood, as well as an online insurance quote generator. You can choose to leave those there. You can choose to add others that you prefer. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and add the electricity company. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now you'll notice that show up on the right. Before sharing this out, I'm going to go ahead and click this icon in the bottom right-hand corner. This lets me see exactly what this timeline will look like for my client. So I'm going to click that. Now, once I share this, this is exactly what my client will see. They'll have access to the events, any notes that I've left, as well as can see the service providers and resources I've added. If I click one of them, you'll see the information show up. That all looks great, so I'm going to go ahead, switch back to my view, and I'm going to go and share that now with my client. So I'm clicking share. I see that both my transaction coordinator and my client are on this list. That looks great. I'm going to customize the message that they receive. And I'm going to go ahead and click send. And what that'll do is send both of those individuals an email containing a link to the Timeline website. And with that, we've reached the end of my introduction to Folio. Check out our YouTube page. I go over a ton of other features, including our team's support, our Folio mobile experience, as well as creating templates for your transactions. Bye for now.